Here is the draft of my letter, dear. Shall I read it to you? Let me see it. What are you doing? A man's life is of more value than a woman's. It has larger issues, wider scopes, greater ambitions. I have just learned it from Lord Corey. And I will not spoil your life for you. You don't see you spoil it as a sacrifice to me. A useless sacrifice. Oh, Gertrude, Gertrude. Lord Corey, I think your father's conversation much more improving than yours. I shall only talk to Lord Cavisham in the future, and always under the usual poetry. <laughs> Darling. <laughs> What does this mean, sir? You don't mean to say that this clever, charming young lady has been so foolish as to accept you. Certainly. And Chiltern has been wise enough to accept the seat in the cabinet. Glad to hear it. I congratulate you, Chiltern. If the country doesn't go to the dogs or the radicals, we shall have a prime minister someday. My lady, luncheon is on the table. Oh, you'll stop the luncheon, Lord Cavisham, won't you? With pleasure. And I'll drive you down to Downing Street afterwards, Chilton. You have a great future before you. A great future. Wish I could say the same for you, sir. But your career will have to be entirely domestic. Yes, father. I prefer it domestic. And if you don't make this young lady an ideal husband, I'll cut you off with a shilling. An ideal husband? Oh, I don't think I would like such a thing. What do you want him to be, then, dear? Oh, he can be what he chooses. All I want to be is... A real wife to him. Upon my word, there is a good deal of common sense in that, Lady Chiltern. Aren't you coming, Robert? Gertrude, is it love you feel for me? Or pity merely? Love and only love. For both of us, a new life is beginning.